and you've got a yardstick that I could reach this with. Praise the Lord. I don't know what's made that for something. scripture first. tonight on the first church. Everybody wants to know if this church is right. Is that church right? Is this church right? Is that church right? did not write about the church. When you look at this, what do you see? Somebody say, I want you to talk. What do you see? What do you see? No, somebody said it. You see the church. Right. This is the first church. All right. Jesus Christ chose this. Didn't come from Wesley. It didn't come from Martin Luther. It didn't come from Calvin. It didn't come from anybody. It came from Jesus Christ. Right. Started His church. Right. He shed His blood for His church. He bought you and I. And that's why we're so happy. We know where we are. We know we got the truth. I thank God for the truth. I've been in it 40 years and I'll never walk out of it. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Now listen to this. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of God. Since we have been baptized in Jesus' name, like Jesus Christ taught the apostles, since we have been filled with the Holy Ghost, like Jesus Christ taught the apostles. Amen. 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 Since we have been born again of the water and the spirit, like Jesus Amen. Christ said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Amen. Let's go on. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles. Here they are. Jesus Christ built his foundation upon the apostles and the prophets and Jesus Christ <coughs> himself. It's an old so-and-so found that church. Well, that's Right. Amen. 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 Amen.
pistol up here means a letter. Praise the Lord. We Praise found him. We found Jesus. Amen. We found God. Manifested in the flesh. God. And Moses took a vow to talk about him. And he wrote about him in the law. And the prophets wrote about Jesus of Nazareth. Praise the Lord, son of Joseph. Well, some people call him son of Joseph, but I don't call him son of Joseph. Because Joseph told Joseph that he's not your son, he's mine. <laughs> He said, that which is conceived in Mary says it's of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So who's Jesus' Father? The Holy Ghost. <laughs> in Matthew 1. Now, when you start in Matthew, I want to cut this short tonight because I want to get to something. I've got to prove something tonight. I am so mad. I'm so mad at the devil. I want to I hid it in the book. Right. If they don't search a book, they'll never find it. Right, right. He said, if this gospel that I preach be hid, it's hid to those that are right. out. Right. They can search the library all they want to. All they right. won't find Jesus or his sister. Yeah. They'll find it in the book. Amen. Gospels. He told about his birth in them. He said his biography right here. He told how, how he died on the cross in them. He told how he went in the resurrection in them. And he ends up in the first chapter of Acts where he starts his church. Right there. The church is not in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is not in the east. The church is in the book of Acts. And it's here. Unless they take the book of Acts out for the night and read it, I'll never find it. Right. Because it hid it in a Man, right. find it in the encyclopedia. Right. Right. Just a man. Right. Right. I, I, 
I read a book this week on uh, on Wesley, and his brother followed him from England to America, and he went in this church and out of that church. Got eight writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Peter, and Paul, and James, and Jude. And it took a hundred years to write it because John, John lived to be a hundred. And after John died a natural death, all of the rest of them died martyred. After John died a natural death, then that was the church. Then they had what they had church fathers. I don't want to go into that. I want to prove some things to you tonight. All right? I don't even want to teach any more. I was going to give a little bit more. But I want to prove something tonight, and I've got to get in it. Okay? So there's 27 books in the New Testament. Now, whose church is that? And who is Jesus? I said, Junk God never done nothing for me. I said, Well, <laughs> he died for you. What do you want out of him? That's right. He shed his blood for you. What do you want out of him? Almost. Amen. He washed you clean. What do you want out of him? Right. He filled you with his spirit and you're talking in tongues, and that's his spirit. So he that speaketh in tongues don't speak to man, so he's speaking unto God. All right. So what are they speaking tongues for?
And the doctrine of purgatory, I worked for a Roman Catholic man one time, I worked for his wife, and she died. He come in, he said, he said, in this house, you will find $1,500. I almost want to quit, by the way. He said, while you're doing the cleaning, you watch every week. You find that money. That is the pay my wife will be perfect. He said, I've got the tax. I don't know where she is. Then one day I went in and he had a son of that maid and said, I've been here for the cleaning. He left his drawer and he had a roll of it. That drawer, that drawer, he was standing And I looked at him and I said, uh, 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 what's this one? You think I run and told him I found some money? Uh, well, I left that drawer alone. I got on the bus and went home and never mentioned it. If his son had it, I wouldn't get him to it. I don't know what his son would have told him. Now, I don't say that was his money. What's her money? I don't know who's money goes. I just wasn't going to get involved. Maybe they get money because he has a good job. She don't get involved. All right, now, I want you to get your calculator ready. You ready, boys? Okay, Martin Luther brought his church into existence because he was praying in the Roman Catholic Church as a monk, and he knew something wasn't right. And he, he got the Bible out, and he started reading the Bible, and he read the scripture, the just shall live by faith. That's the first ray of light since 1,200 years of darkness from the truth. So that's what we believe. We believe the just to live by faith. Amen? Amen. Amen? Now, take your calculator and subtract 1517 from 1990. Let's find out how old that church is. Jesus Christ, the church, is 2,000 years old. Or I hope that makes it 393. Yeah. Uh, according to the Jewish calendar, it will. Because we're talking about our Gentile kind of thing. Okay, what you got? How old is it? Say it again. The 473. The wrong... That, Martin Luther's church is only 473 years old. Is it the first church? No. How could it be? When Jesus Christ was born almost 2,000 years ago. Why can't people get their heads screwed on? Now, Let's go to the next one. Get your calculator going. The Presbyterian Church began with the Calvin, and they believed in communion only as a memorial. So they put their glasses in the back here, and they had communion every Sunday, and it's just for a memorial to remember what Jesus did. A communion. How old is it? 464 years old. The Presbyterian Church, which is called the Sister Church, the Roman Catholic Church. All right, now, the Congregational Church, and I like this. Now, I want you to know that I have a respect for these churches because they fulfill a plan of God, but they are not the truth. This is line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, and these are step by step back to Pentecost. We're going back to Pentecost. I got to put, put, put a tax here so it wasn't, it wasn't uh, white enough. All right, now. These are the, these are restoring what the Roman Catholic Church destroyed. So Martin Luther restores faith. John Calvin restores communion. Okay, you get 
idea? Yeah. So in the restoration, you have to be thankful that they are restoring, bringing things back to the original Pentecostal church. And But they were just men, and when I read about them, I find out that they don't even know God. If there's anybody out of all of them that I, I haven't read them all as yet, but when I read Martin Luther, I believe Martin Luther uh, knew how to touch God. And I believe he died and went through more persecution than any of the rest of these. I don't find these really being persecuted. Okay, now, uh, let's go to the next one. The Baptist Church was born in 1609 by John Smith. 381 years old. Oh, is that the true church? Is that the first church? Now, if everybody knew these were reformed churches to bring back to the original church, then they could get back to the original church quicker. But you wonder what these churches are doing? Don't get mad at them. Either they'll, the scripture says, come out of her, my people, come out of her. Okay, they'll come out of Roman Catholicism. But one thing they carried with them. The Catholic priest instituted the Trinity baptism. Their Trinity, their Trinity, their Trinity, their Trinity. They never went back past into Jesus Christ and the apostles' lives and found out how Jesus and the apostles baptized. So they're still under the power of the Roman Catholic Church, and today they're in the Ecumenical Council under the Roman Pope. They're going right back to what they thought to come out of. For they're in darkness yet. I tell you what, you better be back. Got the life of Jesus Christ. Oh, praise God. Praise the Lord. Because I was in that mess. Thank you, Jesus. Was you in that mess? I was. Maybe. Were you a Catholic when I was little? Were you in that mess? I was. I didn't have a mess, too. Well, if you wasn't in that, you was in a Roman Catholic mess. That's it. If you came out of the Methodist, you came out of the Baptist, you came out of the Lutheran. You came out of the Presbyterian Church, whatever you did. You still was under the Trinitarian doctrine, which is the Roman Catholic Pope baptism. Amen. And it's not immersion. Uh, we got one on here that he's seen immersion. That's the Baptist Smith. And uh, John Smith. Now, I want just show you something here. The Church of England, the, uh, that where I wrote it here. Oh, Henry VIII. In 1534, he broke away from the Roman Catholic Church because he didn't like the dogma of it. The Roman Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church would have liked to have a king under him. And so he said, no way, I'm a king. So he pulled out and by his own will, God didn't do it. Didn't, it's written that way. By his own will and his own signature, he began the New England church. But he used the Catholic doctrine. He said, you'll do what I tell you to do? Or he said, I'll put you in prison and kill you. Same thing. The only thing is, he took it out from under the Catholic Pope's authority and put it under the King's authority. And now he has power over it. And John Smith came out from under the King. And this wreath that had that little black book and went to the King never was seen no more. His little black book and him disappeared. And he was John Smith's friend. And the king told him, you either give up that doctrine, or he said, I'll put you in prison. So they ran away, and they went to home. Now, people think that John Wesley, uh, John Smith, had a uh, little bit, that's not true. 
his church began in, in Holland. And we, the one that got killed with the little book, he had him a church, but they turned him into Anabaptist, and they had a commotion going on, you know, in church. And he took his people back to England and started that church. So, let's go on. The Christian church, how old is it? Did I jump on? Well, how, how old is a Methodist church? How much? 251 years. All right. All right. Now, how old is the Christian Baptist Church? All right. Are you getting it? Everybody hear it? Okay. Now, how old is the Trinity Pentecostal Church? And we are not a Trinity Pentecostal Church. That's right. Amen. 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 They don't believe anything I believe. Amen. They don't look like I think a Christian ought to look like. Right. They don't live a Christian life. They're a disgrace to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And I don't want anybody associating me with them Amen. because I believe in holiness. I'm going to see Jesus Christ and I'm not going to walk in him in fellowship with one of them. Amen. So you can get fellowship with everybody. You better love everybody. I ain't going to love that mess. That's right. You love Amen. that mess here. That's right. Amen. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ delivered us from that. Why are you going to get in? Amen. 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 Their name is pretty up here. Well, yep, I still don't have it. I don't know what I've done with my overhead projection. Anyway, when you put this up there, their name looks pretty on that book. church. says that the apostles were not missionaries but I, I disagree with them. I know they didn't go when he said in the first chapter of Acts to go into all the world, into the and Samaria and the other parts of the earth. But after Pastor Paul was converted, he took them one by one on a boat because he had none. Pastor Paul was a rich man. He could travel any place he wanted in that very world. He could pay for all of their trip on the boat. And they traveled by boat so there was no other boat. Matthew went to Ethiopia and he was slain. Don't tell how. James 
was 94 years old. Kind of easy to pick on an old man, ain't it? They beat him, and they beat him. And then the Jews threw stones at him. And finally, somebody with a club beat him for himself. Listen, Jesus died on the cross for your and my sin they ever get seen. The men that are the first church died for you and I in the first church. Okay. And let's do the Pope. And I let's do the England King. They walked with Jesus Christ. They watched him heal. They watched him cast out devils. Pray the Lord. They watched him feed the thousands. And they watched him do this. He said, greater things than these you'll do what they mean. He said, you're going to get on a boat. You're going to all the world. You're going to heal people. You're going to cast out devils. Look at a miracle. We're not worthy of this church. Right. You can say you're only me. And I told God today, Lord, I don't mean that. I get to study and I get to pray. God forbid I ever cut. <laughs> now, Matthias took the place of Judas, and they stoned him in Jerusalem and chopped his head. Andrew was crucified on a cross, and he was crucified like Peter. You know, he just crucified on the next cross. Peter was crucified upside down. Uh, Judas, which was Thaddeus, was crucified. Bartholomew and Nathaniel both. Now, I wouldn't want to go to you. Chop the head off, beat my brains out. But they skinned these, skinned them a lot. Oh. And in India, if you want anything cool, you just go to the pocket And they stand down a lot. And then they probably burn them a good thing. Praise the Lord. Because they were both preaching in it. Come! This old doubt. This is me. Thomas only doubted one time. Peter only denied the Lord. One time, three times, but one time. Once they got full of the Holy Ghost and began preaching, you don't hang on what they used to was to be. I don't like to hang on somebody what you used to was to be. Not that you have a right to say. Thank you. 
Somebody's going to make it. Yeah. Look at somebody say, I'm going to make it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Jesus is coming, he's coming again, he's coming in glory, he's coming to reign, well the little flock will rejoice, that's me and you, and
Come on. Oh and every man, every woman don't want to rap you. Come on. Your tongue's moved against me in the picture in God and the yeah. Bible. Your tongue's cursed. That's right. Your tongue is cursed. Yeah, right. Come on, Lord. Every religion. You're talking about me. You're talking about my people. You're talking about what I stand my blood for. Uh, Keep your tongue to yourself. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Now I got lots I can teach off of this. But I want to prove to you, it's got uh, a calculator. Somebody got a calculator with you? The chair? Would you want it to one of these brothers up here? Brother Don? Would you use her calculator? Thank you. Okay, get to it. I hope we can read this. I couldn't make it off the copy because the copy was so small. So. Now this is the first church that you and I just have. You have it in your hand. Oh. Pass these out. Now hang on to these, I might come back and teach off of them. Keep them handy, I'll try to let you know because I don't to teach very often. But I could come back and finish it because it's church history and I'm sure that we need some of this. All right, now this is the first church that you just seen appear. Look at this snake. God. All right, now, this first church was that first hundred years. Jesus Christ and said, in whom all the building fit, frame, fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. You have to have a Holy Spirit. Right. Well, when you, Brother Don, when you begin to believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, came to you. that's a lot. I come across the ocean. You know what I said? I said that come across the ocean. Right. Yeah. It come across the Atlantic and it come across the Pacific. Amen. But it didn't come from Jesus Christ out of Jerusalem. Right. We have to have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues or we're not going in this glorious rapture that we're shouting about tonight. I want to tell you what, this place was full of the power of God. Uh, under his marvelous worship and praise tonight because you don't have no doubt in your mind where you came from and where you're going. And don't ever get lifted up. It's because some way God says, Brother Don, you see that church over there on 17th? Get over there. I want to do something for you. Amen. First time I went to one of these church, it was in a it was in a garage. And Sister Elder was there with her mommy and daddy. And and there was straw all over the floor. And Brother Elder, he looked up and said, Mommy, what is this? And I said, Honey, this is a church. And he said, A church? <laughs> and he knew it was a garage. He was only six years old, but he knew it was a garage. Anybody could tell by looking at it, it was a garage. <laughs> <laughs> and the 
Lord told me, He said, you go in there and get baptized in Jesus' name. And my husband bowed split. He split, and I mean, we've been split ever since. He said, I told you not to go to that church. Listen, nobody's going to tell me not to go where I can find people happy. He's shattered. He's been bad. He's been killed. Praise the Lord. Devils are cast out. All things of great, mighty power in the Bible happens. That's what I want. I had a lady who told me this week. She says, she says, I don't want to do that, Sister Ella, because she says, I want to go to a church where I can be popular. She oh, says, oh, my God. And you have to be popular. I ain't never going to be popular. Are you going to be popular? I'm never going to be popular. I'm going to get the corner high. I'm getting so real. I'm getting so this. I'm getting so that. But one day I am getting, I'm getting ready to get out of here. off your paper and I'll read it up here. But you can read it better off your paper. Okay. In Acts the second chapter 1 and 4, the church is born. Jesus Christ church is born. It is filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and 3,000 is added to it and just read the second chapter of Acts. The eighth chapter of Acts. I think they're on there. Yeah. I know where they are. And the tenth chapter of Acts. And the nineteenth chapter of Acts. And you found the truth. Right. You'll never have to look again. Right. And you found it in this book because all I gave you was scriptures. Right. You found it in this book. You hear me? I said you found it in this book. Amen. Amen. You don't ignore this book. This is God's Word. I don't care. I like the library and I like to go through it. But you know what? I always go home and I get this book out. And, and I said, God, I don't believe that. And I went her and I said, no, I don't. I don't believe that. <laughs> when it is in this book, I don't believe it because it's too much false doctrine for you. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Don't let this book get away from you. And don't you think one minute you can join the church, shake hands with the preacher, get in the church, and go in the rapture? You won't. Because you search his book. If you don't search his book, he knows you don't love him. That's right, man. You fall in love with me when you yeah. search the book. That's right, <laughs> you don't search the book. You young people remember you searched the book in Christian school, but I think some of you is flubbing up. Some of you aren't reading the book. And you pray in school, but if you don't pray out of school, my heart. He's shaking. That's right. Stay on your face. Let God do it again. Don't worry. You ain't going to do it. God's going to do it. God calls you to preach. He does it. You don't have to do it. You read the book and stand on your face and he does it. You just read the book and stand on your face and he does it. You read the book and stand on your face and he does it. Amen. All right, now let's go through it. I think I'll read all of this too. I don't like that. <laughs> all right, let's go. The fundamental, fundamental doctrines under the Pentecost. Now, everything's called Pentecost, ain't Pentecost. I think I'm going to go in some of the Pentecost churches in this town. And I ain't going to take nobody with me, Sister Esther. And I'm going to preach this to them. 
I'm going to make them so mad they're going to cast me right out of the front door. <laughs> I'm going to take nobody with me yet her because uh, I'm going by myself. I'm out to get some souls and I'm getting sick and tired of them preaching a lie. The women look like whores and bitches. Because the preachers won't preach the truth, they're a bunch of cowards. Right. Right. Amen. I'm going in that preacher's house in this town, that his wife sits around and smokes cigarettes while you're there. And you watch, I'm going to get to her. And I'm not going to be mean. I'm going to carry this beautiful gospel into their home. And if they don't expect them, the Lord said, why are your feet? Where did I leave off? <laughs> okay. Our fundamental doctrine that Jesus Christ and the apostles lived and died by was repentance with divine forgiveness. You'll find out that when you repent, you will really forgive so many people who only need to be First, you have to forgive yourself. And once you forgive yourself and you can repent and ask God for forgiving, then you can, then you can go. That's right. But you can't do nothing till you repent before God and then forgive yourself and then get up and forgive everybody, everybody for 40 some years, everybody, you forgive them with the love of God in your heart. Uh, you say, well, if they don't forgive me, well, they are going to forgive you. You and I can't get to heaven if we don't forgive. Amen. You don't have to know when they repent. Yeah. A lot of people have repented. I don't know if that's It's my job to forgive them. That's right. what love them. Amen. That's all. And if I don't, I can't go one step for you. I just might as well get one foot over the other and fall flat on my face. But we're going to live full of forgiveness. Don't forget. You say, I can't forgive him. I can't forgive her. I can't. I can't. You can't do it. 
by immersion. Now this Roman Catholic church here that brought the church into the dark ages, the 1200 years of the dark ages. Can you imagine why the churches today don't see? They got 1200 years of dark ages between them and the church of Jesus Christ. Was you out there stumbling around once? Yeah. Why? Because you had 1,200 years of dark ages between you. Between you and the reality because the Roman Catholic Church destroyed Jesus Christ Church. Not only they did, I'm finding out the Church of England done as bad as they did. Yeah. Church of England told them that's the reason the pilgrims come over here to Plymouth Rock. He said, if you don't obey the rules of the English England, New England church, he said, we will put you in prison and we will kill you. And there was a man that worked with one of the other men, his name was Weiss. And he found a little teeny book. And the name of that book was The Mystery of Iniquity. You know who he is, don't you? There was only four of them printed. And he took this book to the king of England. And the king of England put him in prison to him. Took his book. And now there's three more and there's one lock for the one You know who the mystery of iniquity is. Yeah. He's a saint. Yeah, right. Pray the Lord. Yeah. Reincarnated into the Antichrist. Yeah. You know, the, the king of England was acting like an Antichrist. He's doing just what the Antichrist said. He's telling the people what they can do, and the Pope of Rome was telling the people what they can do, and the Christians either done it or they killed it. They either done it or they fed them to the lion. They either done it, they hung them on poles, charred and fed them, and in the arenas, the horses ran around, the fire burned in our men armed with fire brands, set those Christians on fire, prayed the Lord down on the ground, they were cutting Christians' heads off. Then they had women and children. They turned the lions loose on them and ate the Christians. That's right. And blamed their arms for being false. Yeah. And so they said, "You know who? You know who we hate in this city, don't you?" And she said, "Yes." Yeah. Said, "Said we blame it on them." And so the Christians were killed by the thousands. I'll tell you something. I don't care whether anybody likes me or not. When I walk around town, I keep my head up. I smile at everybody. I'm friendly with everybody. I want them to know that in this church, there is a wonderful, wonderful people. I've got to witness in the library the last three days, so I went home just quit. Cry. I found out it's more interesting get to that lady in the reference department than it is to read a book on reference. <laughs> All right, that's cool. Now, then they were baptized, and that means they went under the water. The Roman Catholic Church changed it, and they started sprinkling the baby. Bring your little baby up here. Let's sprinkle him. You know what that did to that baby? Now, you just 
coming out and say that little thing. How dumb and stupid can religion be? I tell you, I'm old, but I hope I never get that stupid. Yeah, exactly. There! And you got your scriptures up. Go and read them. And I mean, some of you saints don't even know where you came from. <laughs> Sometimes I get to talking to brother and sister and say, Sister, I don't wish I knew that. You mean you don't know you You mean you don't know that? That's a very elementary thought. What do you read? You will not grow if you don't read. Because knowledge comes from the word know. And whatever you know is what you read. If right. you get wisdom, you'll get it from the Holy Ghost. And if That's you don't right. get wisdom, you'll get the gift of uh, something else. Yeah. And then they spoke in tongues. And the Spirit of God spoke through them in Acts 2 and 4 and 10, 46 and 19, 6. Now the Bible said that. I didn't say that. That's right. That's right. Man. I never knew anything about the Holy Ghost until I read my Bible. Right. And I'll tell you something else. I never went to a Pentecostal church to get it. My husband said, you ain't going down there. I said, you ain't going down there. My family don't read that. You ain't going down there. No, God, what am I going to do? So we went to work at night. Turn the Lord. Well, that just <laughs> so as soon as he walks out, I just started praying the Lord. And the Lord they told me if I praise you, I get the Holy Ghost. And I praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And I didn't do it. Well, I'll just get out of report. Praise God, praise God. I got up and done everything. And I said, oh, God! I never made you throw this to no one car call me. Just that. Okay. Sometimes we work to get the Holy Ghost, but we did it to release our fear of something. Say, oh, God! Right. Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Think he goes with all every night. Speak the Lord the whole world. That's a dirty lie, parents. Wake up. Your kid is going to Holy Ghost to it every time. Sit him down and teach him and read the Bible to him. Don't let him Amen. say and make idiots out of him. Amen. The scripture said to read him. Hey, you that my kid. I want to get to this. All right, now, in the dark age, I'll get off on somebody else, something else. I don't want to. All right, now, divine healing. How many have been healed in here? Amen. Say praise the Lord. Praise God. Turn around and say, isn't it wonderful? That's why we're so happy. Amen. Don't it feel good to smile at one another? Yes. You can just literally feel their love coming in your heart and your love going in their heart. Back and forth. Love. 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 Long suffering. Kindness. Gentleness. Oh, beautiful. Praise the Lord. You never felt that. You're in terrible trouble. Now, let's go down here and in this drop, this fall here, this is falling from the truth into 1200 years of dark ages. In this period of time, 
313 A.D., the Roman church took over. You see it up there? Okay. And Trinity was instituted. Everybody, Pope says everybody's got to be baptized in the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. church instituted trinity now the reason they got by with this i want you to know this thing. i searched for this this week and i found the word of god was locked up and it couldn't be found because the Roman Catholic Pope kept the Bible written in Latin. When you go sit in a Roman Catholic church, they get up to participate in Latin, tell me what you are. My dear little Roman Catholic, wrote the Mary Catholic. And I went and I learned nothing. And I wasn't good enough to kneel on their stool. And they served us breakfast, and you know what? They didn't even eat with us. They didn't even come in the room with us. They were absolutely in the And I've never been that sad. And that one thing. I think they're wicked and evil. My sister's husband wouldn't let her go to her own mother's funeral. And she lives in the same city. I was there. She called me on the phone and she said, I'm just sorry. I cannot come to the funeral. I said, well, just don't feel bad because mother isn't going to miss you. Hadn't been here for years. Why should you miss her? She's dead. The wickedness in the hearts of people. Trinity! Purgatory. A man come to my home a couple weeks ago. Sister Elder, or he says, Mom Elder, how do I know? How do I know that the feast of prayer out of purgatory? What is she thinking of me right now? I said, Let me tell you something. She ain't thinking nothing about you. She's dead. Right. He said, But what if I get married? I said, She ain't never gonna know. In time, man's wife died. He didn't get married. He can get married tomorrow if he wants to. It's kind of a little bit disgraceful, you know. But, uh, <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> you should wait a little bit. Until she gets cold, she he don't want her to turn over in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you a funnier story to go with that, but I'm not going to because it includes me. <laughs> All right, now, uh, so, so now you worship Mary. Mary? Who, me? Me worship Mary? You're crazy. I ain't worshiping that woman. That's right. That's right. No way. <laughs> All right. And go confess your sins. Father, so and so and so and so. 
Jesus said, don't call no man father. Yes, I'm going to go back. Ah, that over again. <laughs> now what I call him. Uh, do I want to tell strange down my sin? Do you want to have my sin? You do? How much can cost me? My Bible tells me to confess my sin to God. That's right. And Jesus Christ died for you, and He has already forgiven you, but you can't forgive yourself. That's right. Confess your sin to God. That's right. You hear what I said? Confess your sins to God. Amen. And if you don't tell somebody else and tell them not to tell them, don't forget. Before you get home, somebody will get That's right. That's right. Because I never seen such a day where the living in that people like to tell dirty things on. That's right. They'd rather kill them than take their hands and lift them up. Indulgence and that, you know, Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> oh, we better go on. Because <laughs> it's a cover. <laughs> Christmas is over. <laughs> All right. And Castle. The Pope is God! And so the Roman Catholic Church don't know God. Because the Pope is sitting in Rome is God. Now what in the world is our church, our world coming to? Okay, now get your calculators out. And we're going to read the Dark Ages down the page, down at the bottom. It says, the light was hidden for 1,200 years. I cried holy. Many 
I want to see Jesus Cause He's the one who died for me I cry holy. 
been here a while back, and the Lord showed me. He said, uh, you know, you've come a long ways. And when I first got in the church, I got in the church because I knew you had to be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, to be saved. But, you know, I've been in now almost, well, a little over eight months. And now I'm in to serve Him. And when I first got in, I knew the coming of the Lord was so soon. But you know, even if he tarried another 20 years, 20 years from the road down the road, I'm still going to be here serving and loving the Lord. And I thank God. When I first found Jesus, something over me stole.
a fugitive from God. You've been wasting, wasting all your life in sin. You've been seeking, seeking everything but Him. You can see the light, but you chose tonight to be king, a fugitive from God. Why don't you turn, turn, turn around? Why do you roam? Can't you see God the Father ways to welcome you home? You were never meant to walk the path you've trod. How long will you run away, a fugitive from God? God's been searching, searching for his long lost child. He's been calling, calling for a long, long while. If you've made his choice, make him your choice. Don't remain a fugitive from God. Why don't you turn, turn, turn around? Why do you roam? Can't you see God the Father ways to welcome you home? You were never meant to walk the path you've trod.